I'll tell you what you did. You made an album. You made your, your you made your, an album under your own name for the first time, and I've just lost count now. Yeah, I did make one, and it's fucking dude. It it's I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of these because it's fucking dope. Because it's dope. You know when you know you know the drill. You make a fucking record, and you've heard it four million times, and by the time it comes out, you're you're like I, I'm over it. Yeah, yeah, Dude, it's everybody I, else's now. I still listen to it. That's I awesome. still listen to it. And that's rare for me because I'm usually, I'm on to the next thing uh, quickly. So mm-hmm. it's, the fact that I'm still listening to it uh, that makes me happy. It's rare. The album's called Andro. Uh, it doesn't take much to realize what it's short for. Um, you know, it is the full human experience. Um, and, you know, start to finish, it starts real heavy, but there's definitely some really sort of like, I would say deep, deep moments on there. Uh, track Tops is one of them. That track with Push Push. On th- that track in particular, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to build, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I'm going to build a track that has no music. I'm going to, the drums are going to play the melody. Yeah, so yeah, I love basically it. the the eight oh eights are going boom, ba ba boom, ba boom, 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 and that was the melody. You have had such a remarkable journey as an artist for someone who has been in in one of the you know the the most successful hard rock bands in music history, right? Facts, 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 facts. <laughs> and then from there, and then from there, through the ups and downs and the and, and the and the we do's and we don'ts of that particular experience, you discovered electronic music and you just threw yourself into it. Because I would play these festivals and I would see you there, you know, and you'd be DJing and I'd be like, "That's really Tommy Lee, like what the?" F-? And then someone would be like, "Dude, he is so deep in the game, you have no idea." When did you <laughs> discover electronic music? How did this fascination become yours? Um, I will tell you. Well. It it probably goes before what I'm going to tell you, but when I was a little man, I, and and this is not really electronic music, but it's just it's what you know. There's it's it's the, it was sort of the beginning. I, I always dug funk, funk music, like the from Parliament to the Gap Band to the Jackson Five. Like I remember yeah. being a, being a drummer. I always loved shit with beats. Hands down. What's the vibe with, because listen, Post is, if you are as an authentic dance music and electronic music fan, then Post is as authentic a fan of hard rock, heavy metal, and all things riff. For sure. For sure. Your your buddy, Andrew Watt, calls me up one day. I'm sitting here in my studio. He's like, yo, dude, me and Post, we're, we're going to come over and drink some fucking beers and, and just fucking jam. And I was like, rad. And I never met him. and. He's, you know, we're sitting here drinking. All of a sudden, we jump out into the live room, and we are just fucking laying down crazy grooves. Uh, and one ended up on uh, beer bongs and Bentleys. Uh, it's called That's right, Over yeah. Now. Over Now, yeah. I play, I play drums on that. So anyway, we became friends, and we've jammed with John Mayer since, and hung out. Like I, I, I can't say enough beautiful words about that guy. I love him. And watching him play, knowing he's a big rock fan, obviously, and then watching him play two hours of Nirvana covers. How good was that? Dude, Dude. it's insane. You're not allowed. That's not a pass you get given. That's like, you don't wake up one day and people don't just go, here's your Nirvana pass for the day. Like you don't do that. You don't do that. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, you better can kill it but he murdered. did it and as somebody who's like really likes him as a person like yourself um outside of just liking his music i watched it like oh god you know post you gotta land this you gotta land this trick yeah. you know it's like watching your friend yeah. really push themselves on a skateboard and you're like if you don't land this you're gonna break your ankle yeah. and uh <laughs> and he f-ing landed it and i was Whoa. like oh my god dude i was t- i was bugging out I, I knew he was a rock fan, but I didn't know he was like on that level or like you could tell he was feeling the shit. He wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to play a couple Nirvana covers. He was fucking, he was in it. It's the early 90s and Motley Crue are coming out of the biggest, biggest time in your ever. Like you've been the band of the 80s as far as hard rock is concerned. And then a band like Nirvana comes along and you are at odds with them stylistically, but you are in love with them as a music fan. How, totally. how how was how was that? I, 
I I welcomed that with in the biggest open arms on the planet. I was like, yes, somebody's fucking stirring it up. Breaking, breaking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm. if I hear another fucking a song that sounds like, I don't know, I was just, us? you know. <laughs> yeah, like us. I was like, you know, there were so many bands that were sounding like everything just sounding the same. And mm. I love it when someone throws a fucking grenade into the mix and goes, no, nope, we're going this way. And dude, I love that. And then, you know, then Soundgarden. And then it just kept going. Yeah. One of the great moments the last sort of few years for me was watching you come out and play and 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 help pull the pumpkins back together oh. and help pull them back into something that that resembled what we love about them. And then since sort of around that moment, we've seen Billy start to carefully put the pieces back into a place where they actually have a 3.0, a genuine 3.0, which I feel they do. Now, having spoken to Billy recently, he's very engaged in pumpkinology. So I wonder kind of how that experience was working with the band on that. It's so, so cool, dude. When he hit me up, first of all, I was like, well, you know, like, I mean, we've been friends. He's a huge Motley fan. Um, I remember when he covered Livewire, I was like, whoa, dude, this is crazy. Anyway, um, he flies out here from Chicago. He he won't send me the demos. We're talking on the phone. He won't send me the demos. He's so fucking paranoid. He goes, I, I want to come out there and sit with you and play them. And I was like, all right, cool. He flies out from Chicago. He's playing me the stuff. And I'm like, woo, this is dope, dude. Oh, my God. Fuck, I would love to smash on this, of course. But knowing inside, I'm not like a prog rock kind of guy. Yeah. You know, I'm a funkier, harder hitting, like I, my style isn't really that, but I'm, I'm always fucking game for the, for a challenge. You gotta try, right? You gotta be in. It's a pumpkins record. Dude, I, I had to, I had to, and I, I love a good challenge and it was so fucking cool, uh, tracking drums with him because he's very, we're very much alike when it can be in perfectionists he yeah. he would make i mean i'm sitting in there playing like seven eight into like 12 four and my my brain is like smokes coming out of my ears from counting <laughs> and just like time signature changes you're getting just, corganed i just i totally and he i can see him through the through the window as i'm playing i can see him walking back and forth and then i'll see him start to jump up and down when he's freaking out and and so anyway you know. my point is he's he's such a perfectionist that i would just i would i would nail tracks and he'd be like you know just that last last couple bars towards the end i just felt like it ran out of steam he he was he was an anti pro tools guy he's like there, there will be no edits on this record and i was like all right, I, I'm 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 cool with that. I get it. There's something magical about that one take that's got it all. You know, yeah, you, you can take two two really good takes and make one great one, but he just refused to do that. He just won't do so it. I, yeah, yeah the, and so I mean, I I commend him for that. It's rad. But man, it was a was not an easy record to make to make 10, 12 perfect fucking drum takes. By the way, you've gotten to know MGK obviously now, and this is the geezer who played you in the fucking film. What a great job he did in that film. I mean, he's the star in that film. Dude, he he fucking he nailed it. I've never ever in my life seen somebody with so much dedication. I've known him for years. He calls me up, he's like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. I was like, what? He's like, dude, I'm playing you in the movie. I was like, what? <laughs> and love that immediately. Call. Yeah, immediate, immediately I thought, well, fuck, of course, we're literally the same body type, same kind of like hyper fucking weirdo. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, no fucking way. Congratulations. He's like, dude, I I have the scripts. I'm fucking coming over and we're going to go through this motherfucker line by line by line. And I want to know if this really happened this way, if it didn't, how did it happen? Like he wanted to know everything about everything. Amazing. And I was like, yeah, dude, come on over. So he came over, we went through the script a couple of days. 
And, and then if that wasn't enough for him to like sit with me and really like tweak what everything was, the mo- he goes out and takes like four months of drum lessons at learning how to twirl and bounce the snare drum uh, the stick off the snare drum and, and catch, catch it, yeah, yeah, back. yeah. And all, all my silly mannerisms of, or style things that I do. And he, I was like, I can't believe he's gone this this route. And then to sit up and sit in the makeup trailer, not one, not two, not three, four hours a day to cover all his shit and then put my shit on. I was like, dude, I'd never like, I'd be like. You know what? Fuck this. <laughs> this is this is this is the thing everyone underestimates about about Kells, man. They underestimate his dedication to his craft. They think that Colson is just this guy who came out and just you know took took advantage of charm and talent. But nah, man, he's yeah. a worker. He's a worker. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's nonstop, man. He's he's a he's a great guy. I love him. And yes, you're you're right. you're absolutely right. He murdered it. He fucking murdered it. And he said, he goes, I'm gonna make you proud. I. And he did. Tommy Lee, last time you came off tour, you spent a year drinking because you were bored, and then you, you found something to do for for three years, which is make this album. What are you doing with your time now? How's the boredom levels right now? Boredom level is uh, is way way down. I've been busy telling the world about the record coming out Friday. Um, I, like I said earlier, I've been pl- pl- playing drums. I've been helping a couple other artists uh, produce some tracks. Great. Um, uh, so new marriage I, 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 congratulations I, by the way married once again thank you she keeps me busy she's fucking crazy and i love her crazy um uh yeah good dude i can't complain man i'm i'm a i'm a, a fucking happy camper 